welcome to the sew along for the Madeline Simplicity S9850, which is Madeline's newest pattern with Simplicity, a lingerie inspired dress as well as jumpsuit. In this sew along, I will be going over everything from the design of the 9850 to what pattern pieces you should have cut out, what fabrics you should use, what fabrics you should use where, what trims you should use, what trims you should use where, as well as all sewing steps. I will briefly go over sizing and fit, but if you need any help beyond that, you can reach out to Madeline, that's me, who offers in-person and virtual fit sessions or one-on-one -on -one consultations. Now, before we get into cutting, sewing, elastics, zippers, and all that, let me first tell you about Madeline and what we offer here out of our studio in Philadelphia. Madeline is a woman-owned, that's me, lingerie brand offering DIY kits. Yes, there's a kit for the 9850. Bra making workshops as well as multi-day retreats in person as well as online, tutorials just like this one, as well as ready-made lingerie. What is ready-made lingerie? Ready-made lingerie is lingerie that we sew for you. So if you have a mom, a sister, a friend, a cousin, whoever, who loves your made lingerie but you don't wanna make it for them, that's where we come in. We have a small team of sewers who will make lingerie based on your measurements. Now let's get into the sew along and go over sizing. The 9850 is available in sizes extra small through 5X. And because the 9850 is lingerie inspired, an easier way may be to think about that in terms of band sizes with lingerie. So if you are an extra small in the 9850, that would be the same thing as a band size of 28 in lingerie sizing. If you wear a size small in the 9850, that would equate to a band size 30 in lingerie sizing. If you wear a size medium in the 9850, that would equate to a band size 32 in lingerie sizing. For each size, there are different cup sizes. And you determine your cup size based off of your full bust measurement and your under bust measurement. Your under bust measurement is subtracted full bust measurement. So a great example is let's just say your full bust, which is the fullest part of your bust, is 36. And your rib cage, also referred to as your under bust, measures 32. 32 subtracted from 36 equals 4 inches. Each inch equals a cup size. This is standard in lingerie. So an A cup is one inch difference, a B cup is a two inch difference, a C cup is a three inch difference, and a D cup is a four inch difference. So it goes up incrementally. So how do you find the right underwire for your band size or your size as well as your cup size? So in the product description of the Madeline Simplicity S9850 pattern, not the product description of the kit, but the pattern, there is an underwire size chart. So you go on that size chart, you will find your size, find your cup size, and it'll tell you what underwire to choose. Now this is based off of underwires that were our source at Madeline, and we use these underwires to draft the pattern. So they do not equate to other underwire sizes at different companies. So a different company might label their underwire size 70, whereas we label our sizes between 28 and 60. So highly, highly, highly recommend getting an underwire from Madeline um, for the 9850. Now that we went over sizing, let's get into what pattern pieces you should have cut out as well as what fabrics you should have cut out for each pattern piece. I know you were excited to start sewing, but I first want to make sure that you have the correct pattern pieces cut out in the right fabrics. Before though, I want to call out that the front frame and the bra cups are non-stretch. The back band is stretch. If you make the back band pieces out of a non-stretch fabrics, 110% it will be too tight if you cut out your size. So next thing is that for the front frame and the bra cups, you should have pattern pieces number one through six cut out. So number one is center front frame, number two is middle front frame, number three is side front frame, number four is corset center cup, number five is corset side cup, and number six is corset top. I am using fabric from a kit that was on madeline.com. 
And first thing that I want to note is that um, the main fabric was a super sheer all over lace. So, so, so sheer that there would be some nipples showing through. So what I did is I used Otis 505 spray adhesive. I use this in all my laundry. Basically, if we run out of this, we stop what we're doing and go get more. I spray basted the main fabric to the stretch mesh only because I didn't want there. I needed this to be a little bit more opaque. Um, so I'm treating this as one layer. So for the bra cups, I have the main layer, which is the uh, all over celestial lace, spray basted to layer of stretch mesh with the lining fabric, which is a sheer couple lining, separate. So for the bra cups, number four, five, and six, you have your main fabrics and your lining fabrics cut separately. Now for the front frame, I have spray basted all those layers together. So the celestial all over lace with the stretch mesh with the sheer cup lining. So it's three layers here. It is not thick at all. You might be thinking, oh my God, that's so bulky, but it's really not. All three of these layers are super sheer and super thin. So uh, I just treat these as one layer. So to recap, bra cups, main fabric and lining fabrics cut separately. The front frame, uh, uh, number pattern piece number one through three, all of those fabrics are spray basted together. And now let's move on to the back bands. The back band pattern pieces are number seven, eight, and nine. Really easy is that I uh, use stretch mesh, um, two layers of stretch mesh, just so that it wasn't really sheer, um, and I spray basted them together. Key thing to remember here is that when cutting the back band, make sure that the direction of greatest stretch is going around the body. You need the back band to be stretchy in order to provide a little bit of flexibility when um, wearing it or else it's gonna be too tight. You're gonna feel constricted. For the skirt, there is the top skirt as well as the bottom skirt. The top skirt is pattern piece number 12 which is the main fabric and pattern piece number 14, which is the lining fabric. The main fabric, I am using a celestial all over lace. The lining fabric, I'm using a stretch mesh. So I need to think about with this skirt and fullness that you want. So I'm cutting a size small AB cup and I should be cutting out a small skirt. But if you want more ruffle, more volume in that skirt, you could definitely cut out a size large or extra large uh, to give yourself a little bit more fullness, especially on the bottom skirt ruffle. You could cut out another additional piece in order to add a lot more volume to the bottom of the dress. Um, for the sleeve ruffle, there are two. There's a larger sleeve ruffle as well as a smaller sleeve ruffle. Those are pattern pieces number 10 and 11. They are not cut out on this photo, but you could use stretch mesh or um, a layer of the all over celestial lace or your main fabric. I'm doing my best to uh, put everything on one picture, so hopefully uh, this explains it well. Okay, so now you can see the bottom ruffle skirt, which is pattern piece number 13. The last thing to cut out, and this is only if you are making the jumpsuit version, are number 15, which is the pant front, and number 16, which is the pant back. Key thing to know about uh, the pant is that it was drafted for stretch fabrics. So do not try to make it out of a non-stretch fabric because it won't fit if you cut the size that you measure. Now comes the fun part, sewing. The pattern comes with instructions, but please note that I will be going out of order. Just so don't freak out if you go through the pattern and you're like, wait a second, she is on a way different step. Totally okay, the end product is still the same. So on this side, I have the pattern pieces that show the before, and I'm going to explain what you should be doing um, on this side. And then this side is the after. I think it's very helpful to see the finished product as I'm explaining. So 
first thing is super easy is that you are gonna sew a straight stitch about a quarter slash eighth, no more than a quarter down from the edge of the front frame. This is going to serve as a guideline so that you are gonna turn this back along that stitch line and do another stitch um, just about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch down. I have thread tails here for the first line of stitching, but for the second one, you can or cannot back stitch. It is totally up to you. Sometimes back stitching on a little tiny piece like this is very difficult. Next thing is that you are going to sew the main fabrics of pattern piece number four and pattern piece number five, which is the corset side cup and the corset center cup together along the vertical seam. Quarter of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning of the M, back stitch at the beginning and the ends for both the main fabrics and the lining fabrics. And you're gonna do that separately. So I've done that here, main fabric, lining fabric. Now after sometimes dealing with uh, sheer fabrics like this, serging is optional, but if you wanna do what I did and I just pressed the seam allowances to one side and did a zigzag stitch over it. Next up is that you're gonna place the main or the lining fabric to the main fabric right sides together. Sew a straight stitch along the top edge or the neckline. Quarter inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the ends. Here is the finished piece. And then I pressed the seam allowances towards the lining side and did a nice edge stitch using a straight stitch. You can also use a zigzag stitch. It's fine if you want your stitches to be consistent. Um, and then you're gonna fold this back. Those are the steps. Okay, so I have sewed down the top edge of the center front cup with a straight stitch. I trimmed all the th thread tails on either side. Next thing is that on the corset top, pattern piece number six, when I fold back the lining side, I wanna fold it back so that the main fabric kind of turns over. Well, this is called turn of the cloth. Now, when I do that, you can see that the lining overhangs the bottom edge. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that back so that it's all nice and clean on this edge. I'm gonna place right sides together of the uh, corset top as well as the lower bra cups together. And I don't use a lot of pins, but if you wanna use more pins, by all means. Then you are going to take your lining and you are going to place it on top. So basically the corset top piece, pattern piece number six, is sandwiched in between the main fabrics and the lining fabrics of the lower bra cups. And you're gonna sew all these together with the straight stitch, back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm gonna go do that and then I will show you how you flip everything right side out so all the seam allowances are encased. I have done that step, sewed the uh, lower bra cups together with the top cup or corset top sandwiched in between. Now I flip everything right side out. Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? And now all the seam allowances on the inside are encased. Don't see any. This one, you don't see that seam allowance. This one, you don't see that seam allowance. You don't see that seam allowance as well. Now, if you want to sew down the seam allowances um, along this seam, you can, totally optional.